Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Town Manager Download, a podcast about local government and the town of Shrewsbury. I'm Kevin Mizikar, Town Manager of the town of Shrewsbury, and as always, I'm joined by Communications Coordinator Taylor Galusha. What's going on, Taylor? Another fun episode for us in store today. Awesome. Second, this will be our second time doing this episode, so it's our annual fiscal year, like our New Year's celebration. Nice. Technically. So forgot the champagne. Yeah, and Mark was going to do a confetti drop, but I forgot to tell him, so, oh. and yeah, it's fine. Maybe next year, who's to say? But um, I'm excited to review fiscal year 2024 with you for the community and um, talk about our accomplishments, but also the challenges we faced and what we kind of look forward to for fiscal year 2025. Same thing, like what challenges we're expecting and maybe what we're most excited for. Awesome. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. But first. Yeah. How are you doing? Good. Things are good. How about you? Good? Yeah, we're fa- we're fantastic. Wonderful. What you do? What, what's been going on recently? Um, just a lot of kickball and a lot of running. So yeah? I'm doing a ten miler at the end of July that I'm getting ramped up for. But um, yeah, kickball is kind of my free time competitive activity. So Got it. lots of playoffs and. I've seen some video games. of your kickball games. I know, games. me getting hit in the face. Yeah, that yep, was I saw that everyone. One. Everyone loves that video for some reason. Mm. I, I, I don't know why. Hmm. Um, I didn't say I loved it. I just saw it. Well, then you're one of few <laughs> that don't. It's <laughs> um, your most viral video. Probably it would be that if yeah. I posted it online. Yep, for sure. With Hollaback Girl as the mm-hmm. beat to me getting knocked in the head. Good. Um, but yeah, so we avoided that this weekend. I did get knocked over by my own teammate, but that's another <laughs> story well, for another day. The first time too. Uh, yeah, but <laughs> yep. yeah, I didn't get steamrolled, so it's fine. But yeah. I feel like you probably had a less injury-prone weekend. I I did. We hosted <laughs> a lot of people at my house, so there's always a chance. Family. Yeah higher chance right i was gonna say the odds are not, or the chances are never zero yeah, that so. was my uh daughter's um dance recital end of the year stuff for them and it was their dance studio mass motion dances 40th anniversary wow. so they had a special show with four different kind of sub shows within it which was a lot of fun you know with alexa being junior and an ella being a, a freshman there and a lot of leading role stuff so That's it cool. was good and you know, get to see the graduating seniors and how hard they've worked and all the things that they've gone through. So it was good, but always a crazy busy weekend in our house. And Mm -hmm. the past two years, we've celebrated that by leaving for Disney the next morning, but we didn't do that this year. So I feel like that was a smart choice. (laughs) (laughs) We're here to do the town manager download. That's why you didn't go to Disney is because we are very strict. Yeah, on our schedule. We've got to do the celebratory show. Right. This is like the most important thing of the year, to be honest. It is. To me, anyway. <laughs> I don't know about anyone else, but this is my New Year's. Yep. So, Eve. So, Eve, what's Eve, up Eve. in the shrew otherwise? Well, because of the close of fiscal year 24 and going into 25, our new contract with Casella begins July 1st, which I think is Monday. Mm-hmm. Um, so, that means that they'll start collecting our trash and recycling townwide um, so residents can start using their new recycling bins and it'll be a single stream um, recycling program meaning that no one has you don't have to like sort anymore between paper paper goods and whatnot all of it can go in the same bin and it'll be collected every week still so there's no changes in that that it's just the frequent or I guess no no sorting so Mm -hmm. same day collection um, we recommend that people still get their bins out by 7 a.m. Um, because like the route might be a little bit different. Right. So if you usually expect it to come at three or something, like you could yeah, be right. you could be a lot earlier in the yeah. day because it is a new um, contractor. Yeah. But I think we're all excited to continue working with Casella. They were a great help in getting the recycling bins delivered to everybody. Um, and there would be like recycling events for people's old recycling bins, so they don't have to be Should the town ones. Them? Yeah, we're nice. gonna recycle them for the community. So there's Good. one at the end of June and then one in July. 
and they're both going to be drop-offs. I believe the June one is the 27th or the 29th um, at the South Street. Okay. It's the Saturday. So what's Saturday? It's the 29th. 29th. Yeah. So it's 29th from um, until 11.30 a.m. Great. So be good for everybody to get their bins over there that they don't want anymore. But you're free to keep them. And use them. And use them for other keep things. Them. Right. Um, and then we have the summer market continuing, mm -hmm. which is a combination of food trucks and farmer's market from 3 o'clock to 7.30 on every Thursday at the town hall, between the town hall and the police station and, and out front. So that's been a success. We had to cancel the last one because of the extreme heat mm -hmm. advisory, but I think that was a wise choice mm -hmm. in the end. Yeah, and there's been live music there, which is super cool. Um, yeah, just a fun event. We've gotten good feedback from people. So yeah, I like going, like seeing all the different vendors and everything. And it's nice seeing like the community kind of gathering at Town Hall because mm -hmm. that's what the space is for. So right. I think we're kind of achieving that vision that we kind of had between the police station and Town Hall with that extra green space and benches and whatnot. Um, speaking of green space, um, me and Nick Repetka, the highway division manager, we went around this morning around meeting. We made two stops to put up our two year stickers on our Tree City USA signs, which I was super excited for um, to get those up there and get ready to start doing our application for year three. So. Yeah. Great. And it's kind of a um, rare. Oh, here yeah. In Shrewsbury. Mm -hmm. um, but we have posted internally for. A new fire chief, um, Chief Vona, is retiring the end of July, just a little over a month from now, after 32 years of service to the fire department. So we've posted internally, you know, we're a big enough department with uh, 44 firefighters to be able to um, have plenty of competition inside. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's the first approach that we'll take. So we'll go through that process and see what the outcome is. And... Um, Although I don't anticipate needing to go any further than that. If we would have to, we would. But um, right. we've posted that internally. So we can have a seamless um, transition, especially if we do make an internal appointment. Right. Because we'll have to do some backfill, mm -hmm. you know, a number of positions likely. So um, we want to be as steady state as we possibly can for that transition near the end of July. So we're working on that right now, which is a pretty big endeavor. Very important yeah. position, of course. And we'll only continue to grow in its its role over the next few years so somewhat excited about that um but thank chief anderson for all his service nope. of course chief yeah. vona oh chief vona yeah so <laughs> well we could thank chief anderson yeah, too <laughs> chief anderson does a good job <laughs> so it's the heat i'm still recovering it's fine i just made a mistake oh okay <laughs> at least you own up to it <laughs> so we started well, about a year ago, right? We did this episode mm -hmm. um, in July. I think we did it, and uh, we. I think it was like here because I, 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 my goal was to get it out before okay. July first. Well, it definitely wasn't this Monday because I was in Disney. Unless you did it without me. No, we hadn't done it the week before. <laughs> Probably. Who's to say? But we, you know, we started off the year with you know high ambition, like we do every year, and like we will this year because we always want to improve, right? Mm -hmm. We're focused on being the best that we possibly can, and that means. We can foresee a lot of opportunity for change and improvement each and every year. Um, one of the biggest things we wanted to work on this year was public engagement and having the public be able to engage with us and provide them with additional information and deeper information. And I'm really happy with so many of the outcomes that we'll, we'll talk about um, throughout the course of the show. Um, what, other, what other things did we set out to achieve in, in 24? I mean, I think our biggest or the most exciting thing about going into 2024 was the it was the first budget cycle that we had had the strategic plan mm -hmm. to begin like aligning um, department goals, like what we're spending our mo our town money on mm -hmm. um, that aligns with the feedback we received through the strategic planning process. So yep. that was exciting for me to kind of have everybody starting to work within that framework. Because I feel like you and I being kind of in the weeds on the strategic planning process, our heads were already there. So it was mm -hmm. exciting to kind of bring everyone else on board. Yeah. Um, so I tried to 
like kind of frame all of our comp like accomplishments or milestones um within that framework so yeah um i mean then that relates to financial responsibility and our continued work and continued work to work within the override framework as we presented our budget for fiscal 25. Yep. um i feel like that was like another big one for us yes yeah. it's, no, it's a was... challenge but also um i think it's something to celebrate too because we continue to like extend the life of it um and work through different models and ways that um we can keep improving yeah and um, we, we are on that. we do continue to work on being able to share that information more yeah. publicly with a dashboard uh, we received the community compact grant to help get kpis up on our website that's been an ongoing process and um We've made a lot of progress on it right now. Uh, we we have regular meetings on it, and, mm -hmm. and we're working our way through building the right data sets within each and every department. I think to, that'll to share. that'll be in our July review next year because we're getting getting there. So Got it. July or August. Yeah. Um, myself, Julie Tierney, our business systems analyst, and then John Holbrook, mm -hmm. who's our GIS project manager. Um, the three of us have been meeting with OpenGov. Um, to get all those data points from different departments. So it's been super fun mm -hmm. working with the two of them and the OpenGov team mm -hmm. to bring this kind of vision to life that we kind of had at the beginning of um, the strategic plan process. So yeah. it'll be exciting now that we actually have data to show for, or we've always had the data, but we'll have data that's clearer mm -hmm. to show for it. So good. Any other challenges? From well, I mean, I, I just, or, there's a lot of ongoing challenges right. that we continue to work through and communicate through, you know, how boards and committees function and, and, and how they, they work. And, um, you know, sometimes what the public sees, the board, Slack board, I'll specifically talk about, and how they have to publicly process things can cause concern right like why would the board be taking well let's use a specific example yeah. like why would the board be um, entertaining a proposal from charter communications selco does a great job with cable and internet right but mm -hmm. there's a process behind that in state law right. that says the board is required to go through a public hearing process and make a determination based upon a particular framework right mm -hmm. it's not like the board is out there seeking proposals from other companies but when a company wants to come in and operate, yeah. actually the federal FCC says, well, you know, we prefer competition over lack of competition. So the board is working through that process right now, you know, was a challenge that started this year, uh, opportunity that, that we're working through and, and the board will uh, pick back up at their second meeting in July. Yeah. And I think probably similar to that, um, reflecting back on the year is also taken on MBTA, right? Mm -hmm. Like you know, that's a state mandate that was put upon the table in front of us. And we have to go through a recommended process and I'm clearly advocating, rec you know, compliance and bringing something to the community that will align with the state law and to the greatest extent possible, um, meet the intended goals of the state law because it is valid state law right right you know we're not going to just scoff at that and say well it's not going to apply to us and let's fight on a legal basis let's let's understand what opportunities do we have can we get an outcome and develop zoning that town meeting supports and approves in that context and uh, bring the community to uh, hopefully get into compliance with the state law like so many other communities have so it's just the why behind yeah. all that is something that we need to continue to work on and i know we'll be celebrating at the end of next year the accomplishment of our first resident academy because we've worked on that through over the course of the year so um yeah let's you want to just get jump into, into it, into yeah. it? We yeah. start at the beginning yeah um so I guess we can just look, well, maybe we'll take it quarter by quarter, but starting in July, um, I was really excited to be able to put out the first um, Shrewsbury Connection quarterly newsletter, which has been a great success in the community. I've heard a lot of great feedback from people about it. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's definitely helped with getting information out to every household 
and they go to businesses too because it's through the every door direct program with the united states postal service Mm -hmm. um it definitely takes a lot of like i put a lot of time into the newsletters but it's kind of become part of our like external like communication strategy for like our more um long-term communications like in advance of different events coming up, getting people aware of different surveys going on and ways to engage, but also it's been a great um, tool for like bringing light to different projects that departments are working on, like fleet management divisions, like refurbs of different um, plows and trucks that we've had to keep the useful life going longer. Um, We also got to talk about the, in the most recent one in the spring, the public health, regional group that we're part of mm-hmm. um the alliance which is and they did a little section just introducing the health agents and kind of their role in connection with shrewsbury yeah. so um working on the next one for next month but continue like continually excited every time it's time which is usually right after the last one launches mm-hmm. to put a new one out yeah i mean <laughs> uh, certainly engaged and connected in that strategic outcome area is is a lot of accomplishments over the course of the year and something Mm -hmm. that we've really focused on another area you know within the strategic outcome area of prosperous is really kind of that economic engine of the community and it continues to be you know as you know on a commercial development side really strong what the community has been asking for for so long build the commercial tax base within the community and i know in january alone we welcomed three new restaurants into the community and and that just really was the yeah. Start of a really strong fiscal year yeah. and a lot of business interest and growth. Uh, and one of them, actually two of them were in that, um, the Maple Ave the Plaza. Yeah. Yeah. And there's another Market coffee, Shoesbury. yeah, Marketplace yeah. Shoesbury. There's yeah. another like coffee pastry place going in there mm-hmm. um, that we've been made aware of. Yeah. So again, it's like exciting to see like last year's progress, like continuing yeah. to next year for that area. Yeah. And that uh, private property owner did a lot of investment in the property mm-hmm. and redevelopment of it and i think that might be the plaza may be full now with that last shop um, or pretty close yeah it's like probably one more maybe yeah. i'm trying to think of the layout in my brain but i can't think of it but yeah there's um egg eggholic which is like a vegan mm-hmm. um egg based restaurant mm-hmm. and then um nola cajun chicken which is in there Mm-hmm. And the is it Imperial Buffet mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. So they're filling in lots of good food options right Absolutely. there. Absolutely, yeah. So into August, um, kind of continued mm-hmm. on the communications front with the uh, launch of a new email program. Yeah, right? so we started a biweekly newsletter back then in August. Feels like it was just yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um and that came along with like the like monthly brochure that I had started doing, which I would include in the email, but it would just give you an overview of like meetings that are going on for the month, different community events. Um, and those were mostly like print based, like we printed them out and had them at town hall. Mm-hmm. Um, but you can start to see my plate filling up by August of all the different um, frequencies that we wanted to be communicating so we have like the quarterly going on we got the monthly and then we have the bi-weekly so you kind of start to see that ex- external communication strategy coming to life um and then in september the police department had their first community night which was like a huge success i remember mm-hmm. it being a super fun event um again falling into that engaged connected area but also thriving kind of giving more um community togetherness event opportunities um again at town hall it was super amazing seeing the property kind of like filled up with um community members um having a good time at the food trucks the different like demonstrations they had and the tour of the police department Mm -hmm. um it was a very exciting first (laughs) yeah first three months of the year it was an amazing event so many people sees the people Mm -hmm. tours were unattainable they were one night because there are so many people there yeah yeah so it was uh definitely a great event so um that takes us into october which is a traditional has been our traditional month for a fall special town meeting mm-hmm. and i thought the special town meeting was um 
you know, somewhat routine and then, uh, you know, also great success. We, we, we took on, I think, nine different Warren articles. Um, you know, they all were reviewed thoroughly by the Finance Committee and town meeting members, and, and they definitely um, passed. We did some, you know, capital budget improvements. We did additions in the stabilization fund and uh, bylaw amendments. So it was only nine articles, but a busy town meeting that I, I thought was really successful and um, helped kept us moving on a legislative basis yeah. throughout the fiscal year. And like another part of like the exceptional category, um, you and I also got to go to ICMA um, down in Austin. That's right. Yep. Which was a great professional development opportunity. Yep. Got to meet a lot of people um, from across the country, but also just in Massachusetts as well that work in municipal government. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you want to say anything else. Well, about I mean, it, I, I just remember, you know, ICMA. I mean, obviously, a lot of great educational opportunities. I think it was the largest ICMA International City County Managers Association conference, over five thousand conferees that were there. Mm -hmm. um, so, just a ton of learning opportunities and networking opportunities. Um, I, you know, everyone that I've gone to have, have been really rewarding, and that one certainly wasn't short on new ideas and, and opportunities yeah. for us to bring back to the community. So always appreciate the opportunity to be able to, to do, um, do that development like that. So, yep. So rolling into start of some of the colder months, but yeah. still a lot going on. Um, I know we held uh first multi multicultural festival. Mm -hmm. it was, you had a, a, a lot of, uh, time spent on that yeah what's your recollection um it was a very successful event um we had good attendance for the first one and a lot of collaboration between mm -hmm. um departments the deib committee myself and um connecting with a bunch of different um like community members that have have these dance schools have these like musical instrumental um classes that have students that are um amazing dancers and musicians like i loved watching all the performances we had a lot of different vendors that were able to come and share um like their experiences and it it, it was a very feel good day i felt good after it so good. for myself and the deib committee are hoping to have another one um next year Great. um and keep that for the, the community because one of those outcome areas was having more cultural and social experiences under the thriving category. And I think this was like a perfect example of trying to continue to do that. Okay. And we also launched our climate action plan, which is another big one in the sustainable category. Mm -hmm. um, and that was probably like almost a full year of work and planning on that. And we continue to meet um, with the consultant um, KLA, and we're working to continue to bring that plan to life the same way we've done with the strategic plan. So Great. another very exciting month <laughs> in the books. Mm -hmm. I feel like you're excited about December, so yeah, <laughs> you, can, I mean, you can jump de in. <laughs> December, um, we did a lot of work in developing the curriculum for the Resident Academy um, and finding the right time to get that started with our cohort of first round students or academy members and and department schedules and our schedules have been more of a challenge than I want it to be but we're, we're focused on the fall and we have the curriculum in place which I'm glad we took the time that we did to develop mm -hmm. that and we'll be rolling into the fall and welcoming first academy members and then um, this is kind of way behind the scenes but it, you know it was brought to the forefront during the town meeting process. We finalized a new five-year emergency medical services agreement with UMass, which really is a change in the model where the town is going to have uh, more of a, a partnership role over this five years, especially okay. towards the end of it, where um, with we don't we don't offer or we don't operate any aspect of EMS internally right now, but given shortages in the fields and resources that we have, it kind of makes sense to do that. Many other cities and towns in the area that have full-time fire departments rather than uh, call fire departments mm -hmm. 
um, offer these services. So we're going to begin that partnership with UMass and, and take on, hopefully, at least a basic life support ambulance before the end of the five-year agreement. Uh, it also came with a financial contribution, which is the first time in a number of years, but that's the reality reality and very costly business to be in you're talking you know ambulances that umass uses now is you know almost four hundred thousand dollars per truck i mean yeah um and so being a good partner to them and them to us i look forward to the next five year period uh you know working through this new iteration of an agreement yeah and that's kind of like a industry-wide challenge too mm -hmm. or not industry i guess like it municipal is. challenge yep. Um, so I know my hometown in Connecticut is kind of in a similar situation where they have to have that discussion about the, it was a volunteer ambulance, but if they have enough staffing to do that mm -hmm. anymore. Yeah. Um, but speaking, I guess, of helping out our staff mm -hmm. for January, a huge, I feel like this is like a huge accomplishment that like is very like public facing was a majority of our departments are on OpenGov now offering those online self-service options. I know like our office is totally online with all of our forms now, and we've been working to like acclimate all of our regular licensees and applicants on the system. And I know every, like almost every department is kind of mm -hmm. going through that, but I just want to give Julie um, a shout out because that was a big lift on her end of things. Mm -hmm. But I think it's definitely making a difference for community members. We had an increase of dog registrations um, with the clerk's office because the license was online. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's something that will benefit from yeah. like for years and years. So Yeah, we definitely fast forwarded our way into this initiative and uh, got all departments to think about how they offer services to residents and uh, their application processes and, and data sets and um, any way that we interact with residents, putting it online and tremendous accomplishment for us to get through by the start of the new calendar year yeah and, um it's really makes a difference on on how we do business and it's much more efficient this way so yeah. it's sustainable in that front as well yeah and, and then february was another big month um i started doing our town meeting member weekly updates as we kind of got more into actual action items mm -hmm. um for town meeting members as we got doesn't seem close, but as we got closer to May, um, with all the different finance committee meetings, select board meetings, planning board meetings, mm -hmm. um, and that's something I've gotten a lot of like direct feedback on that people really enjoyed those emails. So they're not going away. Mm -hmm. They're just taking a little break until we have more information for special. But um, yeah, another scoop onto the plate yep. of, <laughs> of communications and trying to keep our elected officials, town meeting members more, um, or making it easier, I guess, for them to be in the loop on right. everything, which um, kind of our goal, I think, to yeah. try and make it as easy as possible to participate and at least know what's going on. Yeah. And also in February, two new committees were established mm -hmm. um, that really directly tie into the strategic plan and all the other work that we're doing, um, opportunity for the community to celebrate upcoming uh, major uh, milestone. The 300th anniversary celebration committee was, mm -hmm. was created in February, along with the sustainability um, committee. So um, the board did a lot of work to get those uh, committee members appointed. And now both groups are pretty much off and running. And yeah, will, will sustainability be. will be after the start of the Tuesday, Tuesday. Yeah. yeah so yeah. Yeah. um and then this was another great like story I guess with PI mm -hmm. I don't know if you want to like kind of give yeah. a short a short history yeah, so, yeah. physique <laughs> instrumente is uh is a clean uh high-tech manufacturer that has a number of small U.S. facilities in the region and they're consolidating their U.S. headquarters here to Shrewsbury and we we're working with them on an opportunity uh and Centec North, um, that didn't work out, but quickly they pivoted and um, are now going to operate out of 440 Hartford Turnpike, which is um, under construction. So we held the groundbreaking ceremony mm -hmm. with them in February, and um, you can see the work that's ongoing there, which is really exciting. And just, you know, 
something like over 100 new jobs to the community. It will be their U.S. headquarters. It's you know a state-of-the-art facility, and we're really excited to have them and proud to have them in the community, uh, which was a great event that day, and we look forward to cutting the ribbon if they invite us sometime. <laughs> invite <soon>. us back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, and then internally facing in March, but something I'm really proud of and really excited to uh, see continue is the Shrewsbury Way Emerging Leaders Academy. Taylor, I know you participated in this, um, but this is our internal internal leadership development um, approach where we can uh, assemble a group of emerging leaders and have them work together and work um, through a curriculum um, to build their themselves personally and their roles within the community, expose them to other aspects of the operation. Uh, it was facilitated by John Wartna, Wartman and uh, Christina Ordung, our HR director, uh, played a huge role in developing the, the curriculum. But what, what was your experience um, starting that program off in March? Um, well, my first like impression of it, I was excited because it brought together a lot of people from different departments um, who I got the opportunity to collaborate like there was a lot of familiar faces for me but just because of the u uniqueness of my role but there were a lot of people in that room that have never met each other mm -hmm. but we're all kind of all in the same like level of position um and kind of like eagerness to keep like improving so it was great for like um building more connections like culturally in our organization um but the insight that we were able to get from john mm -hmm. i found super valuable just based on like communication styles, um, approaching conflict, ways to resolve conflict, how to kind of be an effective like facilitator between two different groups that you're having like a discussion with um, and kind of like internally, like checking in with myself on like goal setting and what motivates me, like why do I, why do I like my job? Why do I work in Shrewsbury? Um, so I found like all of that super valuable and they made me public speak, which everyone probably thinks I really like doing, but mm. it's something that I had to overcome. So it kind of mm. gave us all, I think, a little boost of confidence to um, keep doing it. So That's great. April was another like committee establishment that yeah. has a little bit of background with it, which was the Municipal Facilities Optimization Committee was established, and that's related to um, potential projects with the 211 South Street DPW water highway mm -hmm. facilities. Um, and then whatever comes out of that, if there's a need to move spaces around at Town mm -hmm. Hall, um, just kind of getting, I guess, our bearings on what the status is of these mm -hmm. two properties in town. Yeah, it was certainly part of the outcome that came from the board doing a lot of capital. Mm hmm study and research throughout Our the winter improvement months planning, yeah. Yeah. and really settling in on the true needs that exist um, at the south street facility taking into consideration the space challenges at the town hall mm -hmm. and any opportunities that can be mutually beneficial between those two sites and maybe other sites it depends what the the the, out, yeah. the, the optimization committee uh, decides. So we look forward to their work. They're underway. They've been meeting weekly because mm -hmm. they have a really short time frame in their charge. But I think that's good. It, it keeps good momentum and we're getting right. consultants and professionals on board to assist us in that process. And, you know, maybe have a conversation with the community later this summer or early fall about, you know, what their outcomes are and, and how we move forward with right. it. Um, the shortage of space at the town hall is, is a critical need. It, it does it is at a point where it's impacting operations and um, how we staff and what personnel mm -hmm. decisions we're making. So it's real. It, it's it's influencing what we do yeah. on a day to day basis. So um, I think turning to May, we started round two of our community wide survey to benchmark against. Not only how the community viewed us two years ago, but what accomplishments we may have seen from our strategic plan. So where are we are, where where are we with that, and how's it going? Um, so it was launched towards the end of May, mm -hmm. which was exciting and feels like just yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, it's being done through Zen City, and it's a little bit a different approach than our first community survey with Polko. 
Um, it's more web-based and it uses geofencing to around like Shrewsbury as a town um, to create a scientifically significant survey that pulls the different um, demographic age groups, that type of thing to get a true reflection of Shrewsbury as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, and it's done through advertising actually. So like if you're going through your Instagram stories or on Facebook, it could be mixed in with that. So we really appreciate you not doing what I do, which is like tap through really quick when I get the ads, but um, filling out that survey so we can continue to, um, one, see how we have improved since 2021. Um, there is a question in there about like, if you think communications have improved with the mm -hmm. town, um, make sure we're on the right path with that mm -hmm. and give us an opportunity to, um, I guess, keep improving for when we do this again in two years. So. Yeah. Um, I'm excited about it. I, I love doing the survey. I, I think it's a great way for us to get um, feedback through the National Community Survey. Yeah. And then not least or last about May mm -hmm. was our annual town meeting, um, which is like a huge, huge, huge endeavor that we take on every year. Um, a lot of planning goes in from yourself, David Snowden, the assistant town manager for finance, administration and Alex Martinez, um, our management, management analyst. Yep. I almost said Julie's title again. Yep. Um, and also like Jim Kane, our moderator mm -hmm. on setup changes and whatnot. He did some feedback um, in February from town meeting members about um, what they would like to see. And then we benchmarked ourselves with a exit survey where people said, people Probably it was, I think it was like either 60% or more um, said they did like the new 60 or 70% or something. It was very, very positive mm -hmm. that they liked the new setup. They liked having the slides to keep um, keep it more clear of what weren't articles we were on. They loved the town meeting member um, weekly emails to help them feel better informed. Um, so it was nice to see all the preparation and work that we did leading up to town meeting kind of pay off that people did feel more informed going into the meeting. So yeah. hope to continue those things in the future and keep improving. Yeah. You got through all 54 Warren articles in, in two nights and mm -hmm. took feedback along the way on some articles that we passed over for the fall, which, you know, MBTA communities being one of them. Um, one of the zoning articles regards to digital signage didn't pass. So we'll see if there's lessons learned there and if it should be reintroduced or or not and gotta and wait just a keep bit, working though. yeah so so definitely not bringing that back in the <laughs> in the near term um but yeah so that brings us into june and um it's a busy month not only is it the end of the fiscal year and a lot of financial activities that get wrapped up but there's a lot on the agenda from summer markets that we already talked about um but uh, we have one big programmatic change that we'll we'll see um Monday. Yeah. <laughs> Literally right, Monday. <laughs> right at the start of the new fiscal year, but you know, we rolled out the new carts for our recycling program and um, we'll have the new trash hauler in um, to start off the new fiscal year. Um, but before we wrap up the month, the DEIB committee is mm -hmm. hosting their first Pride and Juneteenth events that was, was delayed. Uh, because of some changes last week but what what type of activities will happen there so the pride event is on wednesday this mm -hmm. coming wednesday so this will kind of i wish i could do a post-mortem mm -hmm. on it but um we will be at dean park at one of the pavilions and omens ice cream is coming to serve ice cream um mark and the smc team have lent me a speaker to be able to play some music for the event to keep it lively. We have rocks to be decorated, mm -hmm. um, beaded necklaces. It's supposed to just be like a fun community event um, to bring kind of more awareness around Pride Month, um, which the committee has been planning since March. So they're super excited to kind of have this first um, more fun-based community event. They've done a lot of informational, educational events with the um, coming to the table forums they've done at the library. And then the Juneteenth event, which was supposed to happen last Thursday at the summer market, is now happening this Thursday, the 27th. Um, again, we're having 
a table at the event with some educational materials. Mm -hmm. um, we're giving out some books, like children's books about Juneteenth. Um, they have like some coloring activities. Again, kind of just hoping to be a more lighthearted, um, bring awareness celebration mm -hmm. um, for both events. So I know they're both very excited mm -hmm. um, to have these events. So I'm excited for them. So they've worked really hard. <laughs> I mean, 2024 is definitely a, a great year. I mean, financially speaking for the time, we will wrap up the fiscal year in a, in a very strong financial position. Revenues have exceeded our, our budgeted amounts. Um, expenditures are well within the budget limits. We did, uh, Dave Snowden and Alex Martinez wrapped up uh, financial op operations with the Finance Committee last Thursday, mm -hmm. uh, their last meeting of the fiscal year. So we're in a really good spot. Minor adjustments that occurred um using some reserve funds but less than a third of the reserve fund was used which is only three hundred thousand to start with and when you consider you know 130 million dollar budget yeah. that's that's not any statistically significant amount of change it's really just kind of um tying up some loose ends uh, mm -hmm. that, that occur over the the course of the last 12 months so i'm excited about fiscal year 25 and moving in where i'll be sharing goals with the select board at, at my goals uh, with the select board for their feedback uh, at their second meeting in June and yeah, for tomorrow the and, and working on that stuff, um, you know, as we head into the new fiscal year. Um, yeah, I think the theme for fiscal 25 is just that concept of continuous improvement mm -hmm. and finding ways to keep um, making this town the best it can be, the best local government in the world. That's right. Yeah. I mean, I definitely want to continue to work on trust, engagement, all those things yep. that we're seeing happen, happening at the larger level, mm -hmm. you know, with trust in local government being really critical to, to maintain or, or get back some of the percentage points that broadly has been lost in the local government sector. Uh, and then here in Shrewsbury, just working with residents to make sure they're fully aware and have the opportunity yeah. to engage with us on everything that we're doing yeah. is really important. Um, it's a big part of like my role and my goals for the next year is like refining our external communication strategy um, and continuing to communicate out good, concise information. Um, and we'll also be taking a look internally mm -hmm. on that as well, like what our mm -hmm. internal strategy is for mm -hmm. information sharing so we can mm -hmm. share with the public better too. Yeah. You know, being part of a dynamic, growing community always has yeah. certain challenges, right? Mm -hmm. Like we're in a really strong economic pattern for the town. And um, we know strong economic patterns don't always reach every resident. Uh, we have a lot of interest in, in growth on the commercial side of things that we haven't, you know, seen in a number of years. There's residential interest and in development that continues to grow. Um, there's challenges that are associated with that when it comes to traffic and, and I feel like we're infrastructure. in infrastructure and we're doing a lot of, we've done a lot of planning on that and, and we're, we're well positioned to, to be able to yeah. manage this growth in the future. It's been very beneficial to the community. We've seen probably through this town meeting cycle this spring and for the start of fiscal year 25, more communities asking override questions than maybe we have seen in the last decade or so. Uh, we're fortunate to be in a really strong position where we didn't mean need that, and and we're the biggest factor of that is the community's investment in itself in 2021 when they approved that override. Yeah. Compounded with the new growth that's going on in the community, um, that development that we've seen over the last few years that is maturing and you know, fully getting fit out like we talked about at the beginning of the show or seeing. The finalization of everything that's going on in the Market Basket Plaza at you know um, the Edgemere Drive-in that's really benefiting local receipts yeah. and the tax base and gives us an opportunity to um, manage those infrastructure challenges and continue to serve the community as best that we can. So I look forward to the fiscal year. Um, it, it should be exciting and challenging, just like each and every year. So um, I look forward to working with staff across all departments and meeting the needs of residents and um, continue to strive for our goal of being the best local government in the world. Yeah. Um, speaking of yeah. being the best local government in the world. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Um, I did come up with a question for okay. our, the best segment, which we try to make more fun. Um, and it was, I guess I'll rephrase it from the way I wrote it down because I wrote favorite memory, but mm. I'll say the best memory for you from fiscal year 2024. Mm. Honestly, the first thing that comes to mind, which I'm excited about because it's kind of a catalytic thought that's in my mind is, mm -hmm. is my week at the Athenian program at the College of Charleston. And um, because it provided a new lens for me to think about how I serve the community and how I can build trust and engage and and work with colleagues across the, the country to do similar things while benefiting the town of Shrewsbury, right? Mm -hmm. Trust in local government, leadership in local government. So it was really kind of a energizing reset for me. And um, that's the first thing that comes to mind for me. How about you? I feel like there is a lot of exciting things that happened for me this year with all the different like new um, publications and whatnot. But I still think my favorite was um, when the first, after like, I think it was like three town meeting member weekly updates, I started getting like a lot of emails from people saying how much they appreciated me taking the time to like pull all this information together and that they found it really helpful. And then like kind of seeing that come to fruition um, with the exit survey, um, we had super good, like 70% response rate on that. So um, it was nice kind of seeing that the work that we're doing as town administration is having a positive impact on the community, um, which always feels good because I think that's why we're both here is we want to leave mm -hmm. community better than we found it. Mm -hmm. um, and we try to do that every day with everything we do. That's so. right. Yeah, it was great. Um, definitely a great fiscal year and look forward to moving on to fiscal year 25 and yeah, starting the whole process over and making more meaningful accomplishments f for the residents. So, Mark, cue the confetti drop. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I've certainly really enjoyed the conversation. I want to thank folks for taking the time to listen to our recap for fiscal year 24 and thoughts uh, heading into fiscal year 25. Um, appreciate all the work that goes into town manager download Taylor and, and your work on this um, just a reminder to folks that we can still be reached at TM download at shrewsburyma.gov on behalf of Taylor Galusha I'm Kevin Mizakar thank you for listening cool.